All right. We're going to talk about multiplying and dividing radicals. Now, first of all, radicals are essentially just roots of things that don't get us nice, clean whole numbers. So they're irrationals, and I want to see how they kind of interact together in order to be able to see if we can do some math with them. So let's talk about multiplying radicals first. And in order to figure out how these guys interact, we're going to take some ones that we know are nice, clean numbers and then see if we can come up with a rule that we can apply to the unclean or the ugly ones, all right? So let's start with multiplying two nice simple ones that we kind of already know have whole number answers. So we're going to do root 9 and we're going to multiply that by root 4. So I would never do this with a rule. I would always just say, well, I know root 9 is 3 and I know the square root of 4 is 2. So let's use that as kind of our end result here. So I know the square root of 9 is 3, I know the square root of 4 is 2, and I know that 3 times 2 is 6. So any kind of math I do with these has to be equal to 6 because that's what it's worth. So I'm going to see if I can kind of do some stuff with this and figure out if I can come up with a solution that's the same as 6. So what if I were to take and actually multiply the two things that were underneath the radical? So what if I rewrote this as the square root of 9 times 4? So am I allowed to do that? Well, if I'm allowed to do that, this value has to be equal to 6, right? It has to be the same thing. So what is 9 times 4? Well, 9 times 4 is 36. So the square root of 36 is equal to 6. So it looks like I'm allowed to take those two things that are underneath the roots or the radical signs and multiply them together because my solution comes out to be what I expected. Let's try another one just to make sure. So let's do now slightly larger numbers. Maybe that we just got lucky on that last one. Let's do the square root of 25. And again, these are things that I know the square root of multiplied by the square root of 100. So let's check that out. So Again, I want to come up with the solution to this so I know that if my rule works, I know the answer I should expect to get. The square root of 25 is 5. The square root of 100 is 10. I expect to get 5 times 10, which is 50. So I know that if I use that rule that I just kind of came up with on the last one and I don't get the value of 50, we're going to have to throw it out and start again. So what do we get? Well, 25 times 100. So let's do the square root of... 25 multiplied by 100. And that's just equal to the square root of 2,500. And if you plunk that into your calculator, guess what? You get 50. So this is good news. So we've come up with a rule that we can use to multiply radicals. So of course I would never do this with these ones because these ones have values that I can calculate and get nice whole numbers. So when is this going to be useful to me? Well, let's say I took something like this. I don't have nice whole number answers for those. Those are radicals. They're irrational numbers. They're ugly. But do you see that I could now simplify this using that exact same rule I just used with the ones that were easy? So could I then say that this is exactly the same as the square root of 2 times 3? Well, sure I could, right? It worked with the whole numbers and it worked with the ones I knew. So why is it not going to work with these ones? Of course it's going to work. So 2 times 3 is 6, so I could say that this is the square root of 6. This value here and this value here are the same. And you can actually prove that to yourself by running it through your calculator. The values you get for this times this and root 6 will be identical. They'll be ugly decimal numbers, but they'll be identical. Okay, let's try one more. Again, I hope you see that this rule is going to work no matter what. If I took root 8 and I multiplied it by root 5, well, what am I going to get? I'm going to get the square root of 8 times 5. What is 8 times 5? It's the square root of 40. Now, at this point, this is great. We've managed to simplify the radical, but it's not as simplified as it could be, right? We still have to simplify radicals whenever we can. So 40, I could say, is what? I could say it's 10 times 4. So that's the square root of 10 times 4. And I can take a square root of 4, right? So I would just say that this is 2 square root 10. Yeah? Is that fair? Okay. So I've now developed a multiplication rule that I can use anywhere, right? I can even use it when there's variables involved. So let's try something like that. 
So let's plunk some variables in and see if I can still apply that rule. What happens if I took this, oops, sorry, the square root of x multiplied by the square root of 3x? Well, again, just because there's variables there doesn't change the notion that these are just two radicals being multiplied. So just like my numbers, I can multiply what's underneath those radicals. And I go x multiplied by 3x. And that's going to get me an equivalent expression. So x times 3x is 3x squared. And once again, I can simplify that radical, right? So notice that x is a perfect square. So that's the square root of 3 multiplied by x squared. I can square root that x squared and bring out an x to get me x multiplied by the square root of 3, right? So I end up coming up with a simplified radical term that's a little easier to deal with than that, okay? So as long as you're applying that rule, this is going to work for all of these things, right? It doesn't matter what's underneath those radicals. You can just multiply them together. So it would then lead me to believe that maybe, because kind of multiplication and division are kind of opposites of each other, the same rule might be able to apply for division. So let's try it. What if I were to take, again, some nice simple radicals that I already know? So let's say I have root 100 divided by root 25. Let's use the exact same ones we used before, just in a division question. See if kind of the same thing works. So again, I want to guide myself by the answer to this question, which I know I can solve. Square root of 100 is 10. Square root of 25 is 5. So I expect to get 10 divided by 5, which is 2. So if I apply that rule, I should be getting the same value. Uh, hopefully some of you are already ahead of me on this one. So could I then rewrite this as the square root of 100 divided by 25? Well, what is 100 divided by 25? It's 4. And what's the square root of 4? It's 2, right? So I end up getting the exact same value, so it looks like this rule is going to apply again in this scenario. Let's try one more just to prove it to ourselves. Let's do root 36 divided by root 4. Again, numbers that I know I can deal with. The square root of 36 is 6. The square root of 4 is 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. I expect to get the answer 3. So what happens? 36 divided by 4 underneath the radical. 36 divided by 4 is, of course, 9, and the square root of 9 is 3. So it looks like we've again come up with the same kind of idea as the multiplication rule, just with division. And that is going to apply no matter what we do, whether we use whole numbers or whether we use ra radicals that we can't come up with whole numbers for. So in other words, the ugly irrationals. So if I were to give you something like this, root 10 divided by root 2, well, that's going to work out to be the exact same thing that we did with the multiplication, just in division. That's going to be the square root of 10 divided by 2, right? The square root of 10 divided by 2, that's the square root of 5. And again, those values will be identical. This will work out to be the same as that. If you want to run them through your calculator and prove it to yourself, you can. All right? So let's try one more, and then we'll throw in some variables. So let's do square root of 35 divided by the square root of 5. So that's going to be the square root of 35 divided by 5, which is the square root of 7. So again, that solution and that are the same thing. So when you're dividing radicals, you can just take the things that are underneath the radical sign and divide them. Okay? Nothing to it. So once again, that then also applies when we're dealing with variables. Imagine I gave you something like this, and I'll write it slightly differently just to prove that there is no difference. So that's still a dividing question, divided by x squared, okay? And again, what's that going to equal? That's going to equal the square root of x to the fifth divided by x squared. Now I know my exponent laws, I can divide those by subtracting the exponents, which gets me the square root of x cubed. That can be simplified, so don't forget that you still have to simplify these things even if they're variables. So this could then be rewritten as the square root of x multiplied by x squared. That's a perfect square, which I can then square root and bring the x out, right? So that would be equal to x on the outside from here. And then what's left inside is just an x. We got x root x, okay? So the multiplication and division rules for radicals are pretty straightforward. 
If you're multiplying two radicals, you can literally multiply what's underneath the radical sign and put it underneath a single radical. Same thing works for division. Hope that helps.